Yeah. 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 Okay, um, let, let's get started. Um, last time we, we kind of set the uh, bigger frame for our project. So we, we had kind of a business context and we realized where uh, success may actually come from when it comes to the definition if a project has been successful. So we, we moved a little bit uh, beyond the iron triangle, what we like uh, emphasized a little bit with quality, uh, um, which was later on redefined the scope uh, and uh, time or, or duration that we take, and uh, um, last but not least, the budget, yeah, the money, how, how much we actually spent on it. Yeah, so this was quite an important setting. We will uh, now move a little bit on and uh, think about the uh, project categorization, and uh, with it comes uh, a pretty hip thing at the moment. So this is cool stuff. Yeah, we, uh, uh, if you read like the journals, uh, last um, it was this summer. Sorry, not last year. Uh, this summer we had actually in the International uh, Journal of Project Management a special <coughs> issue on portfolio management. So there are a lot of companies that try to make it work, and it kind of doesn't work for them at the moment. Yeah. And uh, Alex and I, we have written as well a paper about it to explain. We, we have used a few case studies to really come up with a conceptual framework that made it work for medium-sized enterprises. Yeah, with large scale, I'll give a few examples later on. They are good examples, they are very sufficient in this. I'm not sure that it always translates to the project management level, but at the top they get out what they are after. So this is important to recognize. Um, I'm aware that uh, this wasn't available to you, so I would encourage you to do that as a homework, uh, a little bit uh, reading. The, um, I actually suggest as a key reading, of course, Alex in my paper. Yeah? This is very important. Uh, there's a, uh, um, the, the problem is that uh, the issue 11 actually indicates it's in November. Yeah? So it's coming out next month. I, I will upload the draft copy on the ELP so that you have access to it. Uh, read through it. We have actually structured that quite functional. So we have actually titles, what is portfolio management? How does it fit with your organization? Uh, so in a way, it's a title that we have here. And reading is often a good exercise to take actually condensed information in, in a, uh, like a little bit more unfolded way. Yeah? Alternatively, we have again the book sections in my uh, uh, suggested key books. Yeah? OK, uh, today. Uh, we start actually off uh, the other way around and I, I refer to a little bit research that I did as well uh, with one of my um, dissertation students. We, we had a look at a cluster of companies and we had a look at how they're actually categorizing or, or selecting projects for uh, proceeding with them and uh, it, it turned actually for her around the project management office. So we looked what support function can the project management office uh, actually deliver to the project and how do you select the right project for you as a project manager as well. So there's a lot of parallel literature but in reality this is used as well to select the projects actually for portfolio and then in the second half we are actually looking at portfolio uh, project port, uh, portfolio management, when to use portfolios, I give you a few examples and what is it, uh, uh, well, what is it with examples exactly? And also there's a little bit confusion about this um, I will try to shed actually light on that and actually explain it just um, that there are alternative answers. Yeah? And then last but not least, uh, it's how does it actually influence us on the project management level? And then uh, um, managing project portfolios in the end, I have a guide. Yeah? So if you're interested in this, this is a very well, po uh, uh, very well paid position. Uh, um, I have a few past graduates yeah, from this degree course that work in portfolio management they normally earn uh, uh, roughly 10% more than the average. And also, uh, there, there's a little bit uh, statistical insight into um, few, uh, past generations of our graduates. Okay, uh, let, let's get started. Uh, um, the, the, this is a famous quote that uh, came actually from our uh, uh, learning legacy with the Association for Project Management in the UK. And uh, they, they had a strategy to help you as a project manager to make all projects to succeed. I, I, I would have liked to see that actually as a guarantee or something like that. Then, then I would have signed up as well for the whole uh, uh, fellow scheme from them. There, there, there's a synergy to, to emerge. 
but uh, um, I have uh, phrased it as well, uh, cynical uh, as it actually um, came across, yeah, so that there was humor in it in this definition, I thought, because uh, it means as well that uh, you determine uh, all projects without fail. What, what does determine mean in this context? What is project determination? What are we doing? What does it mean? I'm after the semantic. Ish. A rough definition we do actually. Not establishing benefits, some degree. So if you d determine a, a project, what, what did you do? Identify the regions. Okay, there's uh, uh, cryptics to it. Actually, this comes uh, uh, from a World Congress that I attended in project management. And I had two project managers uh, discussing this term. He said, like, my, project, my projects were all uh, determined and uh, um, we had loads of them. I'm very proud of myself. And the other one looked in horror at him and he said, you determined all your projects? This is horrendous. Okay, it's a word rizzle. Yeah? Uh, um, have a look. There is a big misunderstanding with this, but it's in our literature. Uh, uh, one has to do with actually completing and fulfilling, and the other one has to do with uh, um, actually stopping it. Yeah, so determination is actually a decision. So it, it's actually not uh, a statement of either. But uh, it, it causes a lot of confusion and here as well. Yeah? So, um, okay, let's start. Uh, uh, what is, um, how, how can we actually select projects? I, I'm after select, uh, selection criteria from you. How would you cluster projects maybe out of comfort uh, zone? Which project would you like to start with? When you, when you start as a project manager at the company, what projects would you like? Construction. Construction. Construction projects, okay. So <coughs> accounted to your probably competence field or, or expertise field, field yeah? So te technical, yeah? Yeah, so match to your qualifications, which is normally a good indicator for capabilities, competencies, and understanding. Yeah? So very good start. One to deliver uh, profit. profit. You want the profitable ones. Yeah. This is a dilemma, isn't it? <laughs> how, how do you know if your project is profitable before you start it? But may maybe we have here a lead. Yeah? So I still like that point. Yeah? So, yeah? Same as before, but more BIM-based. BIM. For, for me, it'd be more BIM, something to do with BIM. So again, expertise based, yeah? Okay, yeah, this is good. I, I like that. So we agree on that, yeah? Um, low, low risk. Low risk. Yeah. So as a first project, you don't want a high risk uh, uh, project, yeah? This not is. Not yeah? And not too complex. This is good, yeah? <laughs> I, I would take note at this point, yeah? <laughs> if your first project is kind of like the most risky project and everybody steps away from you, and, you know, when you ask them for help, it's, no, 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 it's your first project, you, you should do it by yourself, and don't name that I told you anything, yeah? This is when you know you, you should step quickly away. Yeah? So, a very important risk and complexity, yeah? Not too complex. What, what else? Yeah? Sorry? I didn't hear it. No, not too or, or quality driven. Okay. So what, what do you mean by that? This is a little bit cryptic to me. But uh, uh, so you, you mean you don't want a high end where it's very difficult to define what quality is. You you kind of prefer like a little bit more uh, you know standards. So you know okay this is what we are trying to hit. Is this kind of the drift or? So, something in that direction, yeah? Yeah? Okay, yeah, but th this is a good point, yeah? So we, we prefer normally projects that are a little bit better defined. Yeah, where we have a framework at the beginning that we can orientate ourselves on, yeah? Um, what, what, what do you think is traditionally the, the categorization? Has anybody looked at the professional standards? Because they do the same game. They actually tell you at what level you are as a project manager. Do you know by what that is? Oh, no, nobody did like my evening reading suggestion, the, the professional standard. Okay, well, uh, this is a reading to happen at some point, yeah? so uh, please enjoy it. And uh, um, you will see that uh, uh, APM, the first question is, what was the turnover of the project? Yeah? So if you don't have 50 million, it's not a big project. Yeah? 
So uh, I, I would disagree with this heavily, but uh, this is my own <coughs> opinion. Then the, the second is the, the uh, um, second option is uh, exactly what we had. Yeah, it's the riskiness and the complexity of the project. So they they go here in different dimensions. Uh, um, complexity they refer to uh, was it your company that did the project or was there a whole supply chain involved? If it's in your company, it's not that complex. They clearly haven't worked with NASA or a lot of the big companies uh, uh, in the UK themselves. But uh, there's again like this uh, differentiation, yeah. So it has to be interorganizational. And uh, then what else did they had? Seniority. How many years have you been in uh, uh, in the industry? Now, this is quite bad. If you start, yeah, you can kind of claim the qualifications. This is, of course, where you generate deep understanding and knowledge. But uh, um, otherwise, we, we are on a thin edge there. Yeah? So we, we have to start at some point. So APM is actually quite seniority driven. It, it's difficult to start as a fellow. Yeah? Fellow is kind of the, the uh, not top level, but it's when you have been there the longest. Uh, then then uh, you, you don't have to be a member anymore. You're just a fellow. Yeah? Okay, but uh, let's have a look um, uh, how projects can be actually defined. And I, I jump here ahead. I, I will do the proper definition of portfolio management later. I, I just postulate at that point that there are kind of three types of uh, uh, projects. One is a single project yeah, that just floats around. Yeah, and that we have project managers with each one of them. Yeah, that they're kind of important. I, I'll give you the definition in a second. Yeah? Uh, then we have kind of the management of a group of multiple projects. Yeah? Uh, we, we have uh, shortened this. This wasn't by me. This is a, a colleague from, uh, um, I, 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 I think it's Bosnia-Herzegovina, but I'm on thin ice here. Yeah, but uh, um, anyway, uh, um, uh, he basically uh, clustered it in this wonderful acronym MGMP. Yeah? Uh, it sounds very important. Uh, uh, so it's a group of projects. And then we, we have, last but not least, uh, programs, so those are projects that actually interrelate. I'll give you as well a detailed uh, definition in the following. Yeah. So um, here is broken down, yeah, the SPM. Those are actually uh, large-scale projects in whatever your company decide large-scale is. Uh, so this depends on how you have actually in your company context defined that. Uh, normally associated mostly uh, uh, strategic uh, interest yeah, or, or to generate competitive advantage. Yeah, so it's a front-end project. This can be as well a change project in the organization. Yeah? If you have a major organizational change or you have a merger uh, or uh, you have been acquired by another company, yeah, then those, those are kind of uh, important uh, projects. <coughs> and often you have a dedicated project manager as a minimum, if not a whole team. Yeah? So there, there as well uh, uh, analysts assigned and uh, um, uh, sometimes even you, you have like a, a different senior manager that are actually an overlooking sponsor of that project. Yeah? Then you have uh, um, the small ones, uh, uh, the MGMP. Uh, so there they are normally of tactical nature. Uh, th those may be refinements. Uh, um, they, they may have even different goals, but you may have a few of them as a project manager. And those are optimally as well projects that you kind of shape your skills on. Uh, so they, they don't have like necessarily high impact on the uh, strategic objectives, but they're important, yeah, they have to be done. So in, in a way, those are often good projects to start off and often not too complex uh, uh, either. Then last but not least, we, we have the uh, uh, programs, and in the program we normally shuffle together projects that are uh, mutually dependent and uh, sometimes uh, share a common goal. Uh, usually uh, in, uh, on the program level, it's a resource sharing. And it's really uh, um, making sure that the resources are there at the right time, at the right place, uh, to the right amount. Yeah? And that those things are basically balanced. So it gives you as well, um, if, if you are larger companies and you, you are as well into buying materials and uh, uh, actually assemble stuff uh, from other chains, then uh, this gives you a huge strategic advantage, that, that kind of uh, clustering. Okay, and this came from... Uh, Panatukul and uh, Milosevic, and uh, Milosevic uh, is actually the, the person that does a lot of research in this area. The, uh, he's at Reading at the moment, uh, so who is interested in extended reading there. Um, okay, so this is a good start, but uh, let, let's have a, a look a little bit at the differentiation. 
um, project management is really about doing the projects right. Yeah, so we are, this is what we kind of have to look afterwards at. Yeah, we have a rough idea, but we look at uh, how we are delivering projects uh, properly in the, in the following lectures. Yeah? So, but uh, um, uh, if, if they are actually accepted and included in a project portfolio, then we have a different kettle of fish. That is a project portfolio management, and uh, it's doing the right projects and uh, actually bringing the greater value uh, out for the organization that you actually perform it for. Yeah, so the portfolio uh, level is a high level and where it really impacts on the company, if you want. Yeah. Okay. Um, there are actually smart ways of, of um, uh, uh, coming up with this. This is actually uh, kind of brought together by this uh, uh, MSc dissertation, was a super study. We actually looked at the uh, feasibility of that model and quite frankly we figured out that uh, for categorization it's great, but you still need to do the uh, hard check yourself as a project manager and see if the projects really are in the right category. Yeah, and you may have to adapt your management style accordingly. So um, th this is as well why we have different dimensions. So first of all, we have the framework. Yeah, so who does it actually apply to? And, and what do we try to do with this? So the framework is a kind of what holds it together. Then we have analyzed it in terms of major users. This came really uh, from Chenna and Dvir. This is a rough guess how, how you would pronounce those names. Uh, I don't know them personally, uh, uh, but uh, so we, we uh, have here major user users, then the di dimension of impact, yeah, and uh, then where it's actually used. Yeah? And, and you can see uh, um, where, when you come to project typology uh, and the frameworks as a strategic portfolio classification, which really aims uh, to give feedback to the top management, <coughs> yeah, to give as well the right direction in where the company is going. And then uh, um, the uh, um, dimension here is, of course, a strategic goal user. And then uh, it's, you use this in, in the portfolio management itself. I hope that makes sense. Yeah, so then we have NCTP. Yeah, this is cryptics for something that I will explain in a second. Uh, major user, you, project manager. Yeah? And then uh, um, the NCTP stands for Dimensions, Novelty, Complexity, Technology, Pace. Now this is literally the acronym. I hope that makes sense. And then uh, selecting project management uh, uh, style, leader, team, structure, and process around that. This was the idea. This is what we tested in the company. Yeah? And then uh, we, we broke it even down. Then there were preferred uh, ways of delivering it. Yeah? So in some projects, there were work breakdown structures. It was quite task-oriented, uh, easy to do, easy to control. Then others, we had to actually have design loops. Yeah? The, it wasn't that functional. So then it was one work package we had to come up with a design and we, we broke it down within this. Yeah? So it's a different game. So work packages is uh, aimed at the project teams and, and subcontractors potentially. Yeah? So if it goes out of the organization. And then it's uh, a product type or, or work type. Yeah? What, what kind of work is expected. And then use assessing risk time to completion <coughs> to work packages. And uh, what, what one uh, um, company did, this was quite interesting, they used that actually to improve their processes. So they had as well kind of a system manager and uh, uh, he kind of looked at if the tasks were actually smartly aligned, uh, that the person that pushed on with it had the right insight that everything was done before right. Yeah, so um, this is as well where potentially lean and other quality concepts sit. Yeah, so uh, um, there, there are uh, uh, um, quite a few of those. Okay, so this was quickly talked through, but let's actually have a look in, into uh, what, what that means. So at the strategic level, it, it's quite simple. You, you want to actually figure out, is it external driven, internal, is it operational, is it strategic? And then uh, accordingly, you go either into product improvement or new product development. This was how that was termed. You can see this were, uh, th those were engineering, construction, uh, manufacturing, uh, aerospace, and automotive companies that we looked at. Yeah, so um, there were products. This works as well uh, if you have a service, of course. Yeah, I hope that makes sense. Uh, and internally, you had the maintenance, uh, improvement, problem solving, uh, and then, of course, utility and infrastructure and research if it's at a uh, um, strategic level. Yeah, so this is at the top level, uh, uh, but um, then you go actually one down. And this is now uh, for us at the project level. 
Uh, sorry, this is a summary again. Yeah, so this was a strategic portfolio classification. And we will have a look uh, at a few examples in a second. And then you, you had actually the NTCP model. This is for us. So this is what we are evaluating. Yeah, so we have here uh, four dimensions, uh, complexity, yeah, and then uh, to the bottom, uh, uh, well, actually we go clockwise, technology, uh, uh, and then pace, and then no uh, novelty. Yeah? And uh, um, this needs a little bit further explaining that, that you get like a rough idea. So if we start with project complexity, or system scope is, is what uh, um, actually, especially if you have like a bigger companies like to call it an engineering. Yeah, it's uh, a sem like first dimension. Yeah, so to go back, this is like here at the easiest level. Yeah, so here here is like kind of zero, and there is a lot. Yeah, uh, or yeah, you can make it as well light and heavy or something like that. Yeah, the uh, uh, you will see that in a second. What I mean by that. So uh, kind of at the uh, lower end, you have the assembly. A set of various uh, devices is combined into a single unit serving for a single function. Yeah, so it, it sounds quite easy, but it's actually uh, difficult to assess. Then system, consistent of elements of subsystems that together build a complex interactive uh, construct. If of, uh, it offers various functions for a specific operational performance. And then, uh, last but not least, it was an array. So this is on the outer level, a network of large detached systems that combines all functions for a common goal. By the way, when I say large, that doesn't have to do with real physical size. Yeah, that may be just large, that there are a lot of elements that are coming together. Yeah. So I, I hope that makes sense. Uh, uh, reading suggestion is as well there to it, if you're interested in this. Yeah, this is cool stuff, actually. Uh, it's, it's kind of a system approach for dealing with the selection process. Yeah? Then you have the technology uncertainty. Yeah? This is a question of how new is the technology? Yeah? And we, we had this uh, cynical comment yeah, from the uh, NASA report who said, like, we don't want new technology. Let's use the old stuff. Uh, I'm quite happy with this. Yeah? So, um, but here we actually scale it in, in how much uh, we have advanced on the individual parts of this. So uh, we have low tech, this is existing and well-established technology. We have tried it in many different settings. Then you have medium tech, mainly <coughs> existing or base technologies combined with new features. Uh, so this is uh, new software to your existing uh, hard, well, to, for mobile, for example. Yeah? And uh, no, actually mobile is a bad example. But uh, okay, now, now, there, there are a few good examples. Uh, I'm, I'm sure we will cover a few in a second. High tech then uh, new but existing technology, and then super tech. And I did like this, quali uh, this, this uh, category, new uh, technology uh, with well-defined project goals. Yeah. But what does that mean? New technology, well-defined project goals? What do we do here? Yeah, exactly. So we, we kind of, it's research and development. We, we come up with the technology, yeah? So uh, the, that is often difficult for time frames. It's actually not. You just set the time frame and the engineers go away and, and hopefully do it. Yeah, so uh, th this is uh, how it could be functionally managed. But uh, there are, of course, elements to this. Yeah, uh, I have a look at this in a second. So uh, pace is the other dimension yeah, that, that went uh, kind of southwards uh, or, or uh, towards... Uh, the core of the planet. Um, so uh, three different types of urgency. Uh, this was regular, time is not critical for success. Uh, fast competitive, yeah, so if, if uh, your competitor is bringing as well a new uh, um, product out, then uh, it's a question who is first on the market. Yeah? So time driven as they are initiated to capitalize on market opportunities or uh, strategic advantages potentially. And then a critical blitz project, again, super terminology, I'm very impressed. Time is key factor to success. Projects are a result to emergent events that have the potential to deter the organization. Yeah? Uh, okay, can you think of a critical blitz project recently in the news? Or maybe the last three years, I uh, take a few just to, to get an idea for that scale. <coughs> Olympic Games? Olympic Games. Why, why was that the blitz? Wasn't that well planned? Because uh, the Olympics has a deadline, so you have to finish the project. Yeah, okay. So we, we had to, but it, it didn't suddenly emerge. 
it wasn't like tomorrow you're but I, I like you so we, we could probably where, where is the Olympics is it fast competitive where are the others <coughs> There were actually elements, uh, there were small projects on the Olympics that were critical blitz projects. Yeah, there, there was actually one project uh, in particular that made the news that was probably quite uh, uh, in that range. Yeah, but uh, maybe uh, another case study? The Italy, yeah, exactly. And, and why, what uh, was the um, quick response? You, you think of the rescue mission, yeah? yeah. <coughs> oh, they, 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 there's another wonderful hidden project, uh, um, but you're quite right. That was a critical blitz project, yeah? Uh, helicopters coming in, rescuing pe people, disaster projects have often an element from that. Yeah, but uh, um, the, the, the more recent one is they have actually uplifted it yeah. uh, in a smart attempt and now ship it to the scrapyard, which is this way fascinating. Yeah, but that, that isn't no, you are spot on. Yeah, but I, I just thought it's a beautiful project to mention it quickly in between. You are spot on. Yeah, so th this would be a regular project. Yeah, the uh, okay, okay. Yeah, okay. So um, uh, crit uh, maybe another critical blitz uh, project. Yeah, there, there were a few. Uh, the uh, maybe another one, uh, Fukushima, uh, the the How recent about, uh, events. Yeah. You know when uh, Haiti had that. Uh, <laughs> what was it now? It was tectonic plates kind of did that, mm. and then they the tsunami. The tsunami, that's it. Yeah, yeah, the tsunami, and then obviously they had to. Uh, that was an emergent event. They had to like basically rebuild the whole of Haiti. Mm. While well, still doing it now. Yeah, very good example. Yeah, so uh, the disaster projects, uh, we could probably summarize that very often either critical uh, blitz projects, maybe not so f uh, much uh, fast competitive, uh, um, but uh, uh, certainly on the pressing side. Then uh, what would be maybe a more commercial one? A critical uh, uh, blitz project in, in commercial applications? Cars? No? Yeah? Yeah. Well, what did you have in mind there as an example? Uh, you know, to get the latest um, phones out for, say, Apple, Samsung, or Okay. So, but this, this is uh, a little bit, uh, um, is this a blitz? Did you kind of like try to push it on? Or is that more like about uh, um, a strategic advantage? Well, they, they're, they're actually quite a few cool examples uh, uh, that I was fascinated with. I, I will let you to get on with it. Uh, the, the Blitz project was as well uh, a recent uh, project that we had here in the UK. It had to do with paint. Yeah? And uh, um, this was quite critical because they had uh, painted uh, big uh, uh, marine vessels uh, uh, with a certain paint. And uh, it, it was a huge contract. And uh, they had to adapt actually um, the, the paint job. And that, that was quite interesting. Uh, they, they kind of like trialed it on the side. Uh, this was as well in the news that was in Kandao. Uh, if, if anybody is uh, interested, I, I don't know even if, if I say the city right, but it's literally on the, um, in the north on the west coast. Uh, if you're interested, uh, a super project was BIE system, yeah? Uh, yeah. Okay, then we have uh, the last dimension, it's uh, product novelty. Uh, um, this is, uh, um, you, you have here a few more dimensions, yeah, so um, one is really looking at uh, a process change, yeah, more and less, and uh, then you have on the other one how much you actually uh, change the product. Yeah, but what is a process change? Yeah, so you do this kind of the same thing but in a new way, yeah, spot on. Yeah, and then a product change is if you are after a new product yeah, or you, you have something else. And then uh, again, to just give you the scales roughly, so you, you have new core processes on the uh, process uh, change and then at the bottom incremental change, yeah, so, so you try to improve a little bit the, the uh, process. And then uh, in the product range, we have new core product to derivatives and, and enhancements. <coughs> yeah. So this is, uh, uh, be, be aware, yeah, like uh, 
more and more is here in the left corner. This is not our uh, traditional Cartesian uh, um, coordination system. Nobody knows what I'm talking about. Descartes in, uh, invented this in, in 15th century, huh? so now you know. But uh, um, the, uh, normally we have plus and plus in this corner. Yeah? So it's a little bit uh, a-logically, uh, but uh, um, they have designed it that way. Yeah, so I'm not quite sure why. 1992. Uh, uh, you, it's a safe bet. They are not ma mathematicians. I can give you that uh, for granted. Yeah, so, um, but that, that's another thing. So let's have a look at that. Uh, derivative projects. This is a, um, a modified version of an uh, existing product. Then you have the platform projects. So those are literally here the boxes that I'm explaining. Yeah. So. Um, uh, Platform projects, the development uh, work focuses on cost reduction, quality and performance improvement involving familiar technologies or materials. Then you have breakthrough projects. Th those are really now coming to the edge. Yeah? It's incorporate unknown technologies or materials and manufacturing processes have to be reinvented. Uh, this is often a combination. Uh, uh, somehow management doesn't like this. Yeah? We, we like to uh, make uh, for longer with the old ways more money. And uh, uh, often we, we haven't really realized by actually changing it completely, our margins are so much larger that we uh, uh, overtake it uh, uh, very often. This is often what I was doing in my former company. We did a capacity uh, assessment of a, industry, uh, of a manufacturing plant and the managers were like, no, no, we can squeeze the uh, uh, machines, they, they will, uh, our uh, manufacturing lines, they will make us so much profit. Look at our margins, 20%. And then I showed them that with a new manufacturing line, we had 80% uh, profit. Yeah? So you, you have to produce three months and you have overcome the whole capacity of a manufacturing plant. Uh, so this was quite interesting. So there, there are elements with this uh, that, that need consideration. So you can ju justify rebuilding a whole manufacturing plant just on a simple assessment like that. Yeah? Then, okay, last one alliances and partnerships. This is when you try to really uh, develop long-term uh, merits. So these can take the form of any kind of project, either commercial or development, when you are after something new. Yeah. Here recently, if you want like local examples, we, we had pretty cool designs with uh, engine design for automot automotive. Uh, does anybody know the local partnership in, in Gateshead? Who came together? Nissan? Nissan and? Yeah? But well, maybe uh, I, I didn't hear it actually. So give it just, just repeat it louder. <laughs> Yeah, this is, uh, th this is true. This was true in 2001, but uh, um, they're there as well, together involved in this uh, engine. But uh, uh, there's another company. Okay, I'll give you a German example. Yeah, so uh, um, in, in uh, Baden-Württemberg, we, we have kind of the same thing. It's actually Bosch and... Uh, uh, oh, this is a... I have to be careful here. Which group is it, actually? I, I think it's actually Mercedes. I'm pretty sure it's Mercedes. Yeah? <coughs> Chassis building, yeah. Siemens has as well. Yeah, no, okay. Yeah, so let's let's not get. But anyway, we we have the equivalent here, yeah. And uh, it's actually uh, quite quite fascinating. Yeah, so they they have built a, a joint venture actually, uh, which is a form of of you don't trust each other really, so you don't want to write this alliance here. Yeah, we trust each other. You can have a look into my archives. But they didn't go for that. They said like we make a joint venture where we found a new organization and go together this way from here. Yeah? And, and uh, it, it kind of worked for them. Yeah? So the, those are basically the uh, product novelty considerations. Yeah? And, and you, you go, of course, in this partnership, not so much because you're best friends. This is beautiful too, but because you need each other's like, uh, know-how yeah? and insight into the technologies that you're using. At, at that uh, level, it, it's often small teams. Uh, this is uh, research and development often. Yeah. Okay, and any questions at this point? This was kind of how we select things. I have a summary slide again uh, uh, later on. I've kind of simplified it because this is actually quite demanding in a way. Okay, Let, let's think a little bit about the portfolio. The, the portfolio being really this magical thing that uh, uh, was in, invented quite some time ago 
and actually uh, uh, won a Nobel Prize. Yeah? So this is cool stuff in a way. Yeah? Um, the, the portfolio originated uh, uh, from the idea, well, actually, let, let's first do the uh, um, uh, talk. The, uh, so the, the portfolio was really designed to create value and allow as well a, a platform for comparison. Yeah, so you, uh, the, the portfolio is kind of an overview of projects or, or um, yeah, initiative entrepreneurial activities that you are undertaking where you can actually compare them on different premises. What, uh, do, is anybody into share? Uh, um, does anybody have shares in companies? <coughs> anybody into investment in companies? Yeah. Like Rural students. Rural students. No, but you could be interested in it, you know, like for the future. I, I don't, uh, you know, you don't have to have, okay. You know, the small investment counts too, so it's, it's important. Actually, yeah, the, uh, uh, this is a trick uh, and a tip for every student that I do every year. Yeah, buy a share uh, from Porsche. Uh, it's it's uh, at the moment, I think, 125 uh, pounds. And you get invited to a, a five-star gala dinner. Yeah, so uh, it's with lobster, everything, and uh, <laughs> it's it's wonderful. You you have the value effectively out. Oh, and this is filmed. I should be careful here. The um, yeah, but you have the value out actually <laughs> after one year, uh, uh, and, and you you will get a lot of people to know that that are shares. Yeah? So and, and uh, it makes you eligible one share. Yeah, so this is important to remember. And you you have then as well a share in the VW Empire. Yeah, so you you have as well the right to to tell them which direction to go. Yeah, so this is very important to recognize. With uh, with with a lot of power comes responsibility. Be aware of that. Yeah? Okay. Okay, so where, where does our portfolio sit? Um, it, it has been introduced more recently, really, in the project management literature as like this governing <coughs> thing that actually evaluates the overall performance of value. Yeah? How, how does actually the, the, the programs that you're running and the projects create value? So here a few functional de definitions before we dive in. A portfolio is a grouping of projects, programs, and other activities uh, that an organization sponsors. Yeah, so the, the, there's actually here the investment notion. Now this is important to recognize. Uh, a program is a group of related projects that together achieve benefits of a strategic nature. Yeah, um, this can be as well, that there are many reasons for doing programs. Uh, uh, sometimes it's just that you don't have an end at the project, yeah, then, then it, by definition it would be a, pro, a program too. Uh, um, and, and this would have then uh, um, implications maybe just on resource allocation. Last but not least, uh, a project is a unique process with a start and finish undertaken to achieve a desired outcome. Again, you can see the, the definitions uh, differ here slightly, but it's a good start. So um, let's go one, one step back. The, this is kind of what I sold you earlier at, as uh, portfolio management. And uh, um, as you can see, the, the portfolio uh, manager or management is often kind of an outclustered thing yeah? that, that kind of sits um, hierarchically speaking or in, in order of like command, that's a terrible term, but uh, in, in a way it describes it. Uh, um, it, it sits hierarchically above uh, um, probably the program or, or project management office. I, I haven't seen many where you actually have all these offices. So a portfolio, um, if you have actually a designated area, it sits often within the top management. Yeah, so you may have a director for portfolios or senior management. And sometimes you have actually an office. Yeah, so if you deal a lot with investors, uh, in investment banking, then you have often designated team for this. Yeah? This is, uh, I'll show you examples in a second, because uh, um, it's just otherwise too much communication that is required. Yeah? So here are my examples. Uh, um, I've selected them not really randomly. I just went with some that have like kind of easy to uh, um, see uh, portfolios. And uh, I have to admit at that point that they're probably a, a step more in the direction of financial portfolios rather than our project portfolios. But uh, uh, Siemens is an <coughs> exception just to show you here. Uh, the, the, uh, it's, it's always, uh, you, you know, already the, the hidden intent from a company, you know, when it says Siemens Global Website. Yeah? So, uh, but uh, this is a side story. Yeah? So there they have product groups and they have actually in those groupings, just to uh, name a few, automation, building technologies, 
drive technologies, uh, um, they have actually uh, <coughs> like different uh, um, portfolios where they advertise their services and within those they have as well project clusters. Yeah? So Siemens has actually as well project management office. If you're interested, sorry, I, I, I speak here about Siemens because they have been actually quite uh, um, uh, open about it. They have actually publicized how they have set up their program offices, their project management offices, and we have free copies in the library. Yeah? So, uh, sorry, this was free for me, but uh, uh, um, for, for you just to, to uh, uh, take out of the library. Yeah? So, uh, but uh, uh, this was pretty cool. So uh, I was quite impressed. And, and they as well down the road, so this is really why we had to contact them. But uh, um, so you can see they have as well uh, uh, focused um, with their doings on alternative uh, uh, services. So they have focused as well on financial uh, solutions and, and services and uh, even healthcare, mobility and other services. Yeah, so this is one. <clears throat> then, no, I, I had to name this of course, yeah. Volvo just for aesthetic reasons, yeah, you, you can see why. Yeah. So uh, they, they have actually uh, uh, kind of divided it into their uh, functional units. Um, uh, Volvo, this is a little bit a lie, I actually I worked with another student on this, we, we uh, um, had to look at improving the project management within their innovation unit and uh, they, they have actually a matrix organization, but uh, um, the silos and, and the portfolios in terms of products that they hold are kind of organized like that, yeah, uh, this, uh, they, they are actually refined beneath this, yeah? so um, this is kind of just an uh, umbrella, so they have Volvo trucks, then uh, Volvo buses, Volvo construction equipment, uh, Volvo Penta, and Volvo cars. So the, this is like kind of, although they have separated this, and then uh, spot the Volvo Ocean Race below. Yeah? So this is even like something uh, else. Yeah? And then they have as well financial services, and then the Volvo Group as a total, yeah, which is then kind of uh, linking into the umbrella, if that makes sense. Yeah? They should uh, add a spaceship as well, you know? Oh, I like that. <laughs> Yeah, okay, but... Yeah, you could convince them there. The, uh, um, I, I think that needs a lot of convincing. They're, they are not too much in, in, into this at the moment. But uh, actually, close neighbors from them are. Uh, they're, they're actually quite good. And then last but not least, uh, uh, this is really just... Uh, do I trust that page? Oh, yeah. This is, uh, um, this is a dark story of my uh, uh, history. Uh, yeah, my, my granddad was actually, at, at the time, uh, uh, into, uh, yeah, he was in supply chains in a small, medium-sized enterprise, and uh, uh, he had his own company and run it quite successfully international, and this group just bought it. So now we, we are, uh, by definition, very interested. And uh, uh, this is what you would see at the annual general meeting. Yeah, it's in, in Switzerland. And uh, um, their, their portfolio, you, you kind of guess it. Yeah? They're, they're into uh, uh, digging around with materials and into kind of shipping. And then last but not least, into not having a cozy evening in front of the uh, uh, fireplace. This may be two, but uh, it's actually uh, um, uh, material uh, uh, processing. Yeah? And uh, um, so this is them, Glencore uh, Strada now. They've just merged uh, to... to uh, two or three months ago, and uh, there was a big request. It's now the biggest conglomerate that uh, you can, uh, that deals actually with resources in the world. Yeah, so, um, but what was interesting, why I actually show this, is uh, it's, it started off with a pure management team. Yeah, they, they had no assets. They were just providing service. You would call them up, they would set you up with the right trader to buy resources, and they did this initially as well in a pure project organization. It has changed a lot since. They have acquired a lot of companies. And uh, um, yeah, this is kind of where they are uh, distributed. This is locality-wise. Uh, you can see they have as well great ambitions. Uh, and uh, uh, last but not least, they, they have like a portfolio actually by the materials that they provide. Yeah, and then if you actually go into it, you can see that they have a, a refined uh, a portfolio for the functions. Yeah? And uh, um, last but not least, you can see what they actually have in, in terms of uh, 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 yeah, they, they are so big that they actually kind of cover 40% of the resources worldwide. This is quite intense. Huh? The, uh, um, they have been as well charged for monopoly uh, accusations a few times. Yeah? And uh, um, they have as well uh, uh, mapped it out. Yeah? So they, they employ as well a lot of people, as you can see. Yeah? 
Um, so those could be uh, um, different. Uh, um, oh, and, and this was the one that I wanted to show. Sorry. Uh, so um, they have as well at the heart entrepreneurialism, and, and they show you actually the supply chain. So um, there's a lot of cool stuff to study as well on this company. But the portfolio is actually very simple. Huh? So as well, when you click in, you will see they have actually tried to simplify this. Okay. Yeah. So um, this is in a way how, how we can, uh, th this was kind of how it's presented to us and as potential investors, you know, if you want to uh, invest, they are all on the stock market and, uh, and are happy for your contribution too. Yeah. And uh, this is how we conceptualize this. So we, we have kind of, uh, this is not how we, this is actually from Arthur uh, Dietrich and Ikon in 2002. Uh, and and they, they came up with this wonderful simplification. Not quite sure why they went for the triangle. I assume that they wanted to show the hierarchy of importance. Yeah, so at the top, apparently more important. I'm indifferent about this, yeah, but uh, um, this is how they did it. So um, at the top level, you have the strategic setting. Now this is kind of where you want to be in a market, what products you want to bring to the uh, forefront. And then you have those vehicles, yeah, those uh, uh, wheels here. Yeah? The, the big wheels are kind of the programs, and then within it you have the projects. Yeah? And uh, they, they move from one resource, uh, so to do describe the middle level, you, you have in, a, in the portfolio, this is a big triangle if you want, yeah? you, you have uh, um, these uh, um, projects that move from one program where they get resources, allocations, and kind of get trimmed to, to do the right thing, for example, in product development, then move on to the te technology development and they communicate. Yeah? So there's this interlinkage and uh, it looks very complicated, but once you are in it, it it's actually not. Yeah? So, and at the, uh, at the project level, yeah, those uh, little uh, gray uh, um, circles are basically our projects and you can see they go through the normal stage notions. Yeah? Why, why are there only four? We, we had five, right? What, what is missing? could say it's homework. No, but uh, at that point the projects are defined. Yeah, we, we don't have to define them anymore. Does that make sense? <coughs> uh, the, the, this, uh, but uh, I, I will try to make sense now of it. Yeah, I, I didn't uh, want to make it a result. So where does the portfolio come from? I, I promise you uh, uh, somebody that is quite uh, famous and uh, has actually relations in this. Um, it, it was actually uh, Professor Harry Makovitz. Um, who actually won the Nobel Prize on that. Um, he was thinking about uh, a selection tool. Yeah? Uh, it was a mathematical method. So he kind of looked at criterias of the project uh, for efficient financial investment. Yeah? So uh, no other diversification can lower the portfolio's risk for a given return expectation. This was a remit. Yeah? So you, you kind of evaluate it. It's like what you want, what you said. You want to make profitable, yeah. profitable projects. You don't want the unprofitable ones. Yeah? So you allocate the risk against it. You categorize them and then work through it. Yeah? And then uh, uh, no additional expected return can be gained without increasing the risk of the portfolio. Yeah? So this was what he did. So success in relation to risk. Yeah? We, we can have like a guaranteed 5% profit on this. Or we do it a little bit more risky, but then... Uh, uh, Accordingly, we can get potentially 20% on the investment. Yeah? Well, then it comes it's a question what you go for. Yeah. Okay, I, I think now we, we could make a... Let's make a 10 minutes break. Yeah, this was quite heavy. And then have a uh, look at uh, uh, more case studies. Yeah.